we're back with another amazing, absolutely amazing grand finale PowerPoint. It doesn't mean we're not going to make any more, it just means this is a grand finale. This is uh, <laughs> for Iran and uh, uh, the today's date and so forth. It's got to do with it. Yeah. But I'll let you do the explaining because you've just read it. Fresh in your mind. And uh, I'll sit mute as I usually do. Alright, we'll get straight into it. This is all about Sri Lanka. I'll explain as we go along. Okay, so we get this out of the way. <sighs> Now, in previous videos, Yahweh has shown how the measure of the Great Pyramid, altar to the Lord King's Chamber, reveals the number 31101 by measuring along the 50th layer floor through the antechamber to the far wall of the King's Chamber, add the distance to the coffer, then the ceiling, then multiply by lunation, the product equals the birth total of the King James 1611 Bible which is 31101. Good. Yeah. This slide are those measurements, adding them all together, multiplied by a lunation in days, which is 29.53052, equals 31101. So that's the total of the number of verses in this 1611 King James Version of the Bible. Now, in May 2011, from Fiji, Yahweh revealed the island of Sri Lanka and the story from the Hindu scriptures that are over 4,000 years old, how they named Jesus, how he would die on the cross, resurrect, and that as Jesus, he was Yahweh, or Jehovah. Yahweh explained the Hindu Vedas told how Noah released a raven that has telescopic vision. They can fly to an altitude of 20,000 feet and then the raven returned. After a period it was released a second time and then it did not return. Noah then released a dove towards the direction of the raven. The dove by comparison is low flying and capable of long distance. It returned to Noah with an olive branch. There's the island so it of found land, right? Mm. And the olive branch is... What's the olive branch, babe? Hmm? What's the olive branch? Uh, that's the Marshall coat of arms. There you go. Now, Sri Lanka has... It's a actually dual. It's got the uh, royal um, on one side and then it's got the olive branch. But there is a couple. One, another one is black and white stripes, which is Michael the Archangel. <laughs> now, Sri Lanka has a variety of animals that are also spread all around the world. You can find their, the predator animals, panthers, leopards, wildcats, lynxes, jackals, bears and monkeys. And then in the large rivers, crocodiles up to 8 metres in length. The variety of the world of birds is astonishing. Pink flamingos, white stalks, colourful parrots and peacocks, a cross-section of the world's wildlife, all on Sri Lanka. Here's... Uh, Monuments, ancient, mm -hmm. ancient mm -hmm. monuments. Look at the size of these stones and rocks and how in the heck did they get them there? In uh, And here's, uh, this is amazing, isn't it? Good place for a helicopter to land. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now Sri Lanka is one of the most ancient countries in the world and Yahweh is not talking about the monuments or the leg legendary conquerors. This small paradise is where Adam and Eve descended to earth. The Garden of Eden revisited for a second chance. The next slide is Adam's Peak, which is 7,546 7, feet high or 2,300 metres. And look at it! Okay. Yahweh's always said he wants to live on a mountain. The only way in or out by a helicopter. Well, that's also <laughs> keeps the Jehovah's Witnesses away from the front door. <laughs> the front door. Yeah. <laughs> That'll do. Adam, think. Here we go. Now, the number 7546 in Hebrew means sweet smelling perfume of flowers. The 2300 means in Hebrew to be sharp, that is, point of a mountain. In Greek, thea omai, to look closely at, behold, with wide open eyes at something remarkable to gaze at from a distance. Mm -hmm. 
And look, oh, that is glorious. The colour of the rock and the leopard. Now, in Sri Lanka, the highest mountain is nearby Adam's Peak. It's called Pidiru, yeah, right, Talagala. <laughs> And it's 8,280 feet high. The English gematria for that name is 144. The location 7 degrees and 3 seconds north by 80 degrees, 46 minutes, 26 seconds east. There are seven mountains over 7,000 feet. Now, of course, what's the first thing a mountain and 144 brings to mind? Of course, the Great Pyramid. And the book of Revelation. Yes, absolutely. We measure to it the pyramid and the distance is 3110.1 nautical miles, which is the verse total of the King James 1611 only Bible. Okay, so the what distance... Done here? Mm -hmm. Oh, oh. Ah, we'll fix it. Okay, I'll read while you play around with it. The distance... 3110.1 nautical miles is also the total of the seven names in 1 Chronicles 5.13, which is a key verse in all of the Bible. It's the um, house of God. There are also the seven mountains over 7,000 feet. And so with GPS software, measuring the area between them is 118.8 square nautical miles. And that leads right down to Psalm 118, verse 8, which says, It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. And the eighth word is Lord, which has a number in 3068 in the Hebrew Concordance. Now, while the two of us were curing people of deadly diseases in Fiji in 2011, we stayed in a rundown resort surrounded on the one side and rear by the Fijian army. The resort had a Fijian Hindu priest working as a guard, sitting in a small gatehouse. His angel spoke to him one morning, telling him to actually he woke him up. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I said he was sleeping. His angel woke him up and said to get down to our cottage to speak to us. So he got in the habit of coming down each day and it didn't take too long. Uh, before that he concluded by uh, watching Yahweh's face and also asking many, many questions and the answers, knowledge that we gave, it didn't take him too long to figure out that uh, what we were telling him was the absolute truth and he concluded that of course he was Yahweh, Jehovah. Um, and Raj was the one as a holy man who told us of the truth of the Hindu Vedas how old they were and, of course, how Jesus Christ was named as the Saviour and his ministry first time round, the crucifixion, even right down to the, the vinegar, the narcotic on the, uh, mm. the vinegar on the, mm. the stick. So, and uh, it was Raj who said that uh, the Vedas also predict that uh, Yahweh, and Raj himself said that in the strictest Hindu tradition, the Holy Land tradition, they would have the utmost respect meeting any man on the earth because they could be shaking the hand of the Creator. And of course that day he, he did, he knew that he was speaking to the Creator. And so he spent two months with us daily learning. It was a two-way street. He, he, uh. Now, that leads us on to another native of Fiji. You've got the Indians, of course, and then the native Fijians. And it's um, a Fijian native called Lami, that was his nickname. He visited us from the church that was on the army base just up the road. Remember, we were bordering it. He was a friend of James who had met me uh, that afternoon at the market while I was shopping. He came over to me and asked if he could carry my bag for me and then he organised a, a taxi and he got into the taxi to come with me to go back to the cottage. And of course I'd just start talking, because the Fijians are all waiting for the coming of the Lord and 99.9% .9 of them are all Christians. And so I told them, I said, well, you know, I got straight into it, because I, I, I wasn't sure about him. And then um, I told him that the Christ was coming. His name is Brian Nagalatli Marshall. And he came to the cottage going, 
And of course he met him and spent hours that afternoon with us and he told us then that he had come over to me because his angel had spoken to him and said, go and help that woman, she is your mother. So uh, he did. And of course he was amazed, totally blown away. Here he told us of his own circumstances. He was working slave labour for an Australian food production company, earning, uh, he was working 12 hours a day through all kinds of conditions, earning about $10 a day. And that day that we, we met him, he, he didn't have the money to uh, reinstate his um, power that had been cut off. He, he wasn't able to get to the power company to cut it off. So we gave him the money and he went off to do that. And then he came back later. He also told us about his mother who was suffering from type 2 diabetes, an active woman who for the last 12 months could do nothing but lie down. She might spend one hour up during the day, but she couldn't take care of the family. It had fallen to his own young wife to take care of everybody on his meagre salary of $70 a week. And uh, he, he couldn't even afford to catch the bus to work. He had to walk an hour and a half each way. Oh, anyway, it's, just, it's typical, though, of, of how the, the natives are really... Uh, taken advantage of, and foreign-owned corporations, a lot of them Australian. And of course, what are we talking about? We're talking about their God being, you know, Baphomet, Freemason, and... Uh, Something like 40 children a year around uh, Christmas time, I think it is. So yeah, disappear. Disappear. Mm. Oprah Winfrey had come out with a plane load of people to Australia, dumped them off, come over to Fiji, then one on the Blood Moon, which hadn't been a Blood Moon for 400 and some odd years. 154 years, uh, went to a uh, island, Tiny island, and um, it was where the owner of the drink, um, yeah, uh, Red Bull, Red Bull, owns 26,000 dollars per night, per night, night touring. Yeah, that's right. And uh, that was having a big sacrifice over there. She's uh, actually right into the sacrificial stuff. She's a very evil. That's artist. why she is so wealthy. Okay, now uh, getting back to James, um, d telling us about his mum, I put together 14 capsules and told him to give it to his mother, one in the morning, one in the evening, but one as soon as he got home that night, because by this time he's back at night time with, uh, with Lamy. And we gave him also money to buy a big tray of eggs and butter. Uh, their habit in the morning was to have rice for a, a diabetic, that's the worst thing that you can have. So, uh, yeah, and the next day we saw him after church, they came down and said, and she, she had restored overnight. She did throw up, as we warned. Uh, she threw up the first pill, got it all out of her, detoxed, and then by the next pill she was up and restored to life from that um, night onward. And we have a video of her weeks later, weeks and weeks later, where she is bright as a button. And of course, um, James's wife, Grace, had been away with the children while this is all happening. And she came back to find her mother-in-law completely restored. And she didn't know what happened. She couldn't believe it. And then, of course, James brought her down to meet us. And we did the same with their daughter, who had this uh, uh, rash on her leg and so... Oh, that was horrible. Oh. Yes, that was... Um, the silver water cleared that up. like the best thing I got on my arm here. Oh. <laughs> it would look like if she'd have been beat up. But of course, they, they had it. Mm. But it was, was like that all over her legs and, mm. and uh, just had developed that way. Okay, now getting back to Lamy, um, he spent hours, uh, of course, with James that night when they, they, James brought Lamy back. So it was late, 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 after midnight when they went back. Then they came down, of course, again after church the next day. And they told the pastors of the church that the Christ had come <laughs> and all about it. Mm. Now, Lamy's story is amazing because he was in a boiler explosion six, six years Zealand before. Company. New Zealand Logging Company. Uh, no, no, it was Queensland. Queensland Logging Company. New Zealand. New Zealand? Mm -hmm. well, uh, Oh, the insurance was that of Queensland. Okay, okay, all right, but the, the insurance was a Queensland company, something like that. Anyway, but Lamy should have died in that accident. His head had been split open right down to the bone. His uh, whole nervous system was exposed. His he spine spent, was bare. He spent many, many months and then uh, over the years in and out of hospital. 
And so they couldn't fix him, of course. No, of course they couldn't. So the best they could do is just kind of patch him up and send him on his way and then take him back so in. So I worked on him for a couple of minutes and he was 100% <laughs> sure. Well, that was it. There were like two, two bouts with Lamy, weren't there? Because mm. that was then. Now, at the, at the um, uh, churches, um, are all sucking right up to the, uh, was it the, what church is it over there? Whatever. Bullshit church. Well, they, well, they showed them this, benefit. right, and they were at first taken back. Then we showed them the translation into the language, the local language, which Did they use either, mm. which all are identical. And I said, now, you're sucking up to Freemasonry. But um, in the trip we've been there before, uh, where we were staying uh, in a, um, it was a semi-resort uh, units owned by people that had bought them off the Hilton Corporation had, had dredged out the bay and made the landfill and so forth. But they had a, um, a Freemason hall there and uh, one day the ladies who were cleaning up for the uh, people from the resort um, found a box and in it was a head. Skull so, and bone. Uh, these yeah. were all Australians primarily. Uh, very, very wealthy businessmen owned, owned all the big businesses over there. The army went in the next day or so, or the next meeting rather, and uh, grabbed them all <coughs> with the police, uh, put them in jail, and then Frank Panimarama, the next day, released, released them. them. They had to leave the country, but they were all released. So they say. Yeah. Now, what's interesting is, remember, Emily told us, and Emily's in tourism, and she, know, she was saying that uh, that day that they were released after spending the night in jail, Headlines all over the news, uh, all over the newspapers were how good, what good work the Freemasons oh, do. Oh, wonderful people. She said wonderful. you haven't read anything about them forever, and then this happens, and suddenly, from around the globe, what good work the Freemasons do. The Queen would be so proud, wouldn't she? Oh yeah. Now moving right along. Okay, so yeah, the government was watching us both trips. We were there in November 2010, and then back in February for uh, four months, uh, 2011. Uh, we sent Frank um, Benamarama plus the permanent secretary and the president of the nation 33 pages of facts before we arrived on the 12th of November in 2010, all about the cures for AIDS and what we'd done, plus all about uh, Brian as, as the Christ. You know, this is the whole country, you know, oh, Jesus, Jesus, they're waiting for him to front up and so when he does, of course, it's not like they've been told because the world has been deceived. However, the, the meek, of course, receive the news with glad tidings. The dudes at the top that are making all the money, of course, don't want to know. Hmm. Now, um, yeah, so they, re they ignore us because there's no money in our cure. We, we uh, teach people to do it themselves and it doesn't cost anything. And no, so not that. They want them dead. Oh, well. Yeah. They've all got birth certificates. Let's get you the straw man. And what they do is Frank Benamarama was told that um, because he was the Commodore of the Navy and so forth and had taken over in a military coup, um, he was sending soldiers off um, and the government gets paid for every soldier they send. Now, we had spoken to many soldiers that have been over to the front lines in the various wars and they always send them to the front line. So they get, the soldiers get $10 a day. $10 Fiji. Fiji a day, right? So this is about five dollars US, if, if that. Mm. And because um, if they get killed, then the owner of the birth certificate might get twenty million, thirty million. So then there's a kickback going to Frank Benimarama, and as I say, they're all in on it. Mm. And um, he's certainly worth the cost of a bullet, that guy. Now, Lamy, of course, had cousins everywhere. Oh, it's my cousin, it's my cousin. Well, his father had 13 brothers and sisters, and his mother had about 35. <laughs> no, 13, the same, pretty much the same. Uh, so he had, uh, yeah, cousins working in the health department. He did arrange for us to speak with them. We spent an entire afternoon with them. It was great, these beautiful Fiji doctors who all gathered around the boardroom table, and, you know, of course, I'm doing the talking in the other way. There. And we treated all of them with the Bob Beck protocol. The dude, the only dude who... Well, I did say something, didn't I? Yes, you did. I said you want a glass of water here, correct? <laughs> no. Um, the, the, the only dude who, who didn't... No, forget that. The only dude who didn't want to be in there was the Indian doctor who was the head of the department. They, they all say things like... Mm, left. Have you got any papers on it? Have you got any this? Have you got that? Has it done through university studies? Is it 
approved by the FDA, all this bullshit, as if God's going to front up, start curing people and have to get a bloody permit, right, or prove it. Like, there's a person who was going to be dead, up and walking, right? Here's a person that would have had his legs chopped off with the diabetes too, and that's the biggest thing, and they call it the chop. A lot of people have been appetites over there, and uh, of course, they suddenly recover. Mm. They don't need it no more. Mm. We're just saying, well, what happens is they walk into the uh, supermarkets, and that, this is how supermarkets operate, a Zionist supermarket. You walk in, and anything that's not good for you is at the level that is easy to pick up. Mm. So they'd pick up these gallons of bloody oil. oil. That was uh, all sorts of oil, but soy in particular. Canola, canola soy. Soy is one of the worst things in the world. The seed oil. Seed oil. oil. Saturated. And what they do is they put a layer of plastic over your uh, cells yeah. so that the, the receptor on the cell, <clears throat> when a insulin comes along, it can't lock into it. And if mm. it does lock into it normally, it opens up the center of the cell in a specific shape and a key, and that allows the sugar molecule to go in. So unless this is taking that plastic off there, and this is what we were able to do, it might be only one micron thick. I don't mm. know, it's a guess, but the point is that you can't feed a person plastic, and uh, although you call it vegetable oil, yeah. you think it's vegetable oil. Flora, heart healthy, be believing the advertising. So they've been pushed so by Western Zionist corporations. The parents over there of old, is 100 years old, no problem, because they all use coconut oil for cooking mm. and, and don't touch any of the Western foods. Mm. Okay, so, uh, uh, yeah, here we go, going through first trip November 2010 a Commodore. Yeah, uh, Frank ignored us, even though army friends, his army friends, um, had spent much time with us and they were excited and he just completely ignored us. And, but we did get to spend half an hour with Major Rocker Ura, who um, was amazed. A nice fellow. Yeah, good for and most, most, you know, most people in Fiji are very lovely people. Mm. It's the pricks at the top. Mm. Right. Now, what happened was Major Rafa Ura... He's a right-hand man of Frank Benimarama. He, he, he was to make an appointment for us with Frank. Well, 10 days later, he phoned us and he was crying over the phone. He spent 20 minutes with Frank with the, the document that you, you've seen here uh, that we put together for Frank, pages and pages and pages of information and miracles. And uh, plus the 33 pages they'd all already received. And um, Frank dismisses and says, I don't believe it. Well, Major Rocker was devastated. He'd already been telling um, the fellows in the army, this is the document. Uh, his army friends and colleagues and what do you call them in the army? Soldiers. All the soldiers on the base, they already knew, had many conversations with him and they were delighted. So, um, yeah. And they're so all astounded would, why Frank Benamarama is such a lovely fellow. What does Frank say? What does Frank say? Would not make a comment or, in fact, end up throwing us out the company. That's the best thing you could have done because that alerts the people that they've got an arsehole at the top. Yeah. Okay. Arsehole's usually at the bottom, aren't they? <laughs> well, they will. <laughs> Moving right along, baby. No, they can read what's on this. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Now, Major Rokaura, the appointment is made. We're going to meet him uh, before he picks up Frank, who was flying back from China. So uh, he gets a phone call from an Australian on his army mobile and the, the voice, the person warned him not to meet with us, that we were mad or crazy. Of course that just made him more curious and how the hell did he get his army mobile and why was he phoning him to warn him about us? So it didn't take him very long. He it was about 10 minutes into the conversation as he began leaning in. It's all up there. It's been up on the internet and it's all in the archive material of uh, servers all around the planet and of course our own archives that interview with Major Rocker Ura who we found out on our second trip had been arrested by Frank and was interned on the um, army base in Suga and uh, but won't be much longer Keep his yap shut, see? Frank is dead Major Rocker Ura we'll make sure of that. Yeah. and what, here is what it's all about Freemasonry so the this is the thing that's got the, we showed you the other day, Solomon and so forth. Yeah. Now, just to go back here, um, there is uh, how it works out, which we showed, of course, the major, how the languages work, and Lord Jesus Christ, and, and so forth. So, um, this bloody thing not working either. No, it is. Doesn't work. Then we showed him... Um, yeah, these are pages out of the book. Who, yeah. who it is that's in control? Prince Charles? Prince Charles, coat of arms, Talmud. 
towards being the so back now left. here's the queen with lovely chap here he's doing that very very same signal with his hand there it is there's Bush doing it. Now, every photograph that comes out of uh, the royal family, taken with dignitaries like this arsehole, uh, the Queen has to approve it. And there he is, Lord Lucifer Rothschild. Now, of course, I've measured all the distances to Lord Lucifer and all this kind of thing, and uh, I didn't put it into this one uh, because the document is getting too long. But um, this was shown to Major Rockarua. Uh, Showed him um, various things like that. Oh, I, I, I'll, I'll just uh, just read from the the uh, page that you just saw. The longitude and latitude, latitude five one five three Hebrew, is a perhaps in the sense of ringing about bell metal or from the red colour of the throat of a serpent when hissing coppery hard off brass from a snake from its hiss the serpent. That's the latitude of Rothschild. Now, the, the distance from his, um, that residence, which is in Buzzard, England, Wing Lake in Buzzard, England, the distance to the pole, that would be the North Pole, 2632.8 miles, is um, strength, power, occupy, possess in Hebrew, and in Greek is to judge against. Sentence, condemn, damn. So that's what Yahweh has already done to him. And uh, that's just the beginning. Oh, from the North Pole, 2286 in nautical miles, poisonous, fatal, deadly. Okay, they, getting the uh, drift. Like there was no way in the world that he would have uh, acquired that property or had it built unless the latitude and longitude were spelling out exactly what they wanted to do. Oh, here we go. Because the King James Bible, of course, is owned by the um, Freemasons, which are all Satanists. Measuring to the equator, I won't tell you the numbers, but measuring to the equator is uh, 5770 from 5869 to watch with jealousy, I, and from intoxication, drunkenness, as in the all seeing eye of Lucifer. Nautical miles, afar off, from afar, and. Oh, that goes on and on. There's several pages there covering just the one. And here they are, the Luciferian Political Command. And you're religious. You're religious. Kenneth Copeland and wife. And of course. The Pope. He's yes. doing a double battle Now we've got uh, the uh, lineage of the Queen. They're trying to uh, uh, say that uh, Mary Magdalene and Jesus were man and wife and they had children. First one in 33 AD. Second one in 37 AD, that means no chance in the world of Jesus dying on the cross and ascending. Mm. And then we've got uh, Josephus, which is of course the old the name we think, oh, I'm familiar with that. But that's an old historian that, again, you wouldn't trust as far as you could hurl him, that uh, is accepted as being an authentic uh, expert on the uh, days leading up to the uh, time of Jesus. Now, let's get back to Sri Lanka. <laughs> Showing the seven mountains with the heights over 7,000 feet. The highest is 8281 feet. And that's the eighth mountain. Yahweh has used the Magellan software showing the area within the mountains. The software is excellent for accuracy and fine details down to a few feet. There's the blue area. 118.8 square nautical miles and the length is 50.1 nautical miles and of course that's a reference to Psalm 118 verse 8 again and the 50.1 nautical miles meaning God has made there's Psalm 118 verse 8 it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man and the eighth Word, of course, is the word Lord 3068. Now, quoting Isaiah 11, 9, we've just been through, we're in the month of September still, and of course 9, 11, uh, what was it, eight days ago now, nine, yes, eight days ago now. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord, 3068, as the waters cover 
the sea. Reiterating, we covered this in our last video, but in the early 90s, Yao was able to get onto the internet. He hadn't made any uploads, and the first thing that he read was in a chat room. And the post said, I hear Jesus is back living in Canada, waiting for the time he will take over the world. Now, this is the... This the mountain in Sri Lanka. That's the highest mountain in Sri Lanka, 8281 yeah. feet. And measuring two... Mm. Let's see, where are we going? Oh, that's the 311. Yeah. 0 0.1. Okay. All right. Remember the number, 31101 verses in the King James Bible. It's the Great Pyramid. That's the... Just the, just There's the centre of the pyramid. Because you're, we're using Google Earth for the photographs, that is actually, you take a square base, draw a line across it, and there's the exact centre of it, and that gives you that number there. Um, this one here is, um, again, how the numbers all and genetics uh, relate. Uh, that's where I was born, uh, up to uh, my first wife, down to Michelle, who was Mary Magdalene, and back again. Now, these women produce children that give us these numbers. So the pick line included with these two here, uh, that one there to there, for example, is 777.7. That's the age difference in days between my youngest daughter and um, Michelle's youngest daughter. Then we go back to where I was born, that's got 1471. Now this is interesting because it says uh, pregnant great with child. The blue line is the distance to the uh, South Pole and that's the word comforter. So the comforter is God coming to the earth. Jesus says, if I don't go, God won't come back. That's basically what it's saying. Uh, now, Michelle to the pole is 5813. That's the height of the completed pyramid um, with the capstone in place. And the distance through Nell Street <coughs> here around the earth is uh, uh, 31680 kilometres, which is Lord Jesus Christ in Greek. But you'll notice... I had to marry this dreadful, she, she died the other day, and um, the, the uh, latitude is 3323, which is uh, anointed Messiah in Greek and Hebrew. So there's a, uh, an area now. The area of this area here, it is, in fact, 31101 square metres. Uh, I don't think I put it into this PowerPoint, did I? Yeah, I did. Mm -hmm. Oh, there you go. This is done again with Magellan. I w when I went up there to see my daughter, I haven't seen her for years, the youngest one. Um, she didn't want to see me. And um, my ex-wife had told her, or something, the kids, something dreadful about me. Anyhow, I never did find out. I don't want to know, really. And uh, again, uh, from where I was born is 118.22 kilometres. And that is Psalms 11822. So we've got the area, and uh, we've got that number there, which is uh, all to do with uh, and how, the rejected how capstone. Reject, yeah. um, go ahead. Oh, right. As mentioned, the Great Pyramid 50th layer revealed 31101, King James Version of the 1611 Bible, verse total, and also all seven names from First Chronicles 5.13. The average of the, when you divide 7 into 31101, is 4443, found in 3877 verses. Now 3877 is the distance in nautical miles to the South Pole from where Yahweh was reborn, and the 4443 is the number of times the word God is found in those 38777. And born into a Catholic family, of course. Now, while we're in Sabu Sabu, Yahweh was looking through his software and he found a program that would not install. He tried for seven years before it just wouldn't work. However, this day it did and um, it opened. And when it opened, that... And installed. And installed. The, the program sold in the USA. It would normally open over the USA. However, this one didn't. It opened over Sri Lanka. And the screen was 1,700 miles out in space. And then as he zoomed in, it was showing the area, in particular, of Colombo. Now, of course, Yahweh had been there in 1963 on his way to Africa. Then continuing to zoom in, 
waypoints appeared, closing in closer to the waypoints, you saw that so there were eight basically show you now. eastward from Colombo. Uh, that's how it opened up. Then as I started to zoom in, because I thought, why? Angels do this sort of stuff to me all the time. Mm -hmm. And they say, yeah, I've been to Colombo, no worries, see? As you got closer, I notice these, and these are waypoints that are never in any program that you buy off Magellan, and I've had all of them, do they open up with waypoints already in them. But however, this is me, it's a little different. And this is what they look like, it's almost like a cup. And we see the numbers, can you read those numbers out there then? Yes, yeah, so the one on the right is 107726SP. That would mean South Pole. And then you've got the next one, 3168, ARC, and then the Colombo, Colombo rather, not, not Colombo, Colombo, U-M-B-O. And then the next one is 5813, nautical miles, and then it says P, that would be South Pole. Then the one to the bottom left is Victory Pyramid, P-Y-R. The one above it is called Foots Pyramid, P-Y-R. And the one at the very top on the left is 3069 pyramid. Now the next slide will show you the coordinates uh, that you can uh, zoom in, freeze frame it. If you just hit print screen and you can save it into a bitmap and then you can zoom it, it'll give you the numbers. So if you get hold of the Magellan, don't use uh, Google Earth, but use Magellan. And uh, Google Earth is, um, well, three times we've exposed them as being inaccurate by huge amounts of uh, discrepancies. So there they all are. But I want to point this out. You've got Ararat, right? This has appeared on the computer. 107726. That's how many days there are between Charles I and myself, which I've always been annoyed about, or ever since I was a child. And uh, that's the difference in, in, put a decimal point between the two and the six. That's how many miles there is between the same address of a house that uh, was owned by my parents and uh, my mother died, and then my father, who hated me with a passion, uh, he was going to cut me out the will at the last moment, but uh, because he was incompetent, uh, that couldn't be done. It had been handed over to my uh, brother. Um, so he had the decision on that. The next one is 3168, which is Lord Jesus Christ, to the ARC, to the ARC. Then we've got 5813N to the South Pole. 5813 is the height of the Great Pyramid and it's also the distance in kilometres to uh, Nell Street where I live with Mary Magdalene. Then you've got Columbo spelt C-O-L-U-M-B-O and then we go down to 3069 Pyramid. Then we've got Foots Pyramid and then uh, that V-I-C-T-Y? Victi, yeah. Victi Pyramid. So naturally I dove into it and started doing that and this is what it means. You can't read that. Okay. Uh, first, number one, Ararat. Yahweh's brother was 8.88 .88 years older than himself. The sunrise and sunset on the day he was born was 780, and that is the word Ararat. The 107726 to the South Pole, the distance to the South Pole in kilometres. Uh, in nautical miles, however, it is 5813.5, and that was Yahweh's home on Nell Street, Greensboro, Victoria, Melbourne. 5813.7 kilometres to the South Pole. There is a reason why it's 0.7 as opposed to being the same number, and that actually identifies uh, the distance across uh, Brazil and uh, gives you the uh, name. What is it? Mother. Oh, yes, that's right. Remember that? That's right. We did that. Now, that's another thing I'll take two hours to explain oh. that, but I won't go into that. That was Fiji as well, wasn't it? Yeah. Mm. All right, now also the, the distance between the homes, Yahweh's parents' home in Sydney, Australia, and 7 Travone Street, Padstow, or rather uh, Cornwall, Travone Road, Cornwall, is that distance, 10772.6. go to uh, the top of the northern part of the road where it ends, near the beach, and it is uh, 10772.6. And also the amount of days between the beheading of Charles I and my first. And the completed. Oh, the completed pyramid is also the same. The diagonal in feet. when it's completed in feet. Okay. The 3069 is 3169 nautical miles to the Great Pyramid. 3069 is Lord. And the value of the check that he was 
Yahweh was charged with fraud over in 1989 with $306.90. 3168 Arctur Ararat, 3168 miles. And from the Colombo to the city of Colombo is 2.424 miles and 2424 is the listing for Jesus in the Greek concordance. However, the spelling Colombo is not Colombo, Sri Lanka. It's somewhere else. The closest Colombo <laughs> is Colombo Creek, New South Wales, Australia. Now, it measures from there 8,600 kilometres, and that was Yahweh's age to his daughter's conception, which was July the 27th, 1967, when Yahweh was 8,600 days old. Jupiter is 8,800, sorry, 88,800 miles wide, and it was over Port Alberni, BC, Canada, on that date of the conception for 888 minutes. Now, of course, Yahweh's daughter was born on May the 4th, which is the, the day that this is all happening, 2011. 1968 was her birthday, and Yahweh was 8,880 8, days old. The sunrise to sunset was 888 minutes, and the verse... Matthew 1.23 has a Greek gematria of 8,880. He could go on. <laughs> However, this is the verse. Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Now, Colombo Creek to Yahweh's rebirth home at 39.67 degrees, and that number, 3967 in Greek, is Patrikos, meaning paternal father. And there it is there. The distance is 130.15 miles, and the 130, have you got it? I think so. Uh, we have a lot of trouble with computers. Um, we're constantly <laughs> being hacked. Funny how we'll get it right in a minute. This there time. you go. Yeah, right? yeah. That, so that's the distance between the two. So let's go to the 130. Okay, 130 is the gematria for the location where the mountains are found. Nuwara Elia. Elia. Elijah. 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 Nuwara Elijah. New Elijah. 130 in English gematria. 1301 is the level of the Dead Sea below sea level and Barak in Hebrew meaning a flashing sword, bright, glittering sword. That's why the ex-prime minister of this uh, um, bogus Israel was named Barak. Oh, that's his uh, outsider. No, that, no, we're talking Jeremiah. We're talking the prime minister of Israel some years ago. His oh, name right. was Barak. That's okay. why they put him in, strike like lightning, right? Right, okay, got it. But his, uh, his general now today is Barak. Is it? Yeah. Oh. Right. Um, all right, now Yahweh says he never prompts anyone to research, sorry, to reach a conclusion. He always waits for a person to dream or be inspired, even seeing an angel. He was working at his computer in Nell Street when his eldest granddaughter walked into the room and at age four she announced, I was your mother, wasn't I? <laughs> he said yes. He said no more. She walked back into the other room to play with her toys. Now, she was reborn on the 222nd day of the year, which was August 11th in 2001, two years before the last solar eclipse of the 20th century had taken place on the same date. The passage of the totality of that eclipse started in the Irish Sea, ending over Sri Lanka. There are 222 verses with the word truth and 222 verses with the word wisdom. And Yahweh has always weighed 222 pounds as an adult. And of course, you were born at 2.22 a.m., mm. the thief in the night. Now, Yahweh's mother had died two years before on her sister's birthday, her grandson's birthday and her granddaughter's birthday, which was July the 24th, so that was 1999. Had she lived, she would have been 88.834 years old when Alaska was born on August 11th, 2001. So when we measure from the Colombo Creek, New South Wales, to Yahweh's rebirth location, to the highest peak in Sri Lanka, the distance is 8,883.4 kilometres. 
Okay, and there it is. The heading 161.57. What I can do with this particular program is you can see the blue part. It looks like a sword. Well, you can do that. You can take three points. It'll give the area in between. Now, I've done a lot of things with that, and uh, it gets a bit complicated to show people who are, especially when they've just come off the, the uh, internet and they found something like this. And, uh, Right. Now the 1615 was something remarkable too, wasn't it? Got it there. I, is it? I don't remember. Keep going. Um, yeah, it means 1615 means to end completely finished. Yeah, oh, that kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Next, next two down. Again. Uh, oh, there it is. There it is. Okay, so Alaska was born August 11, 2001, the anniversary of the last solar eclipse that ended its path over Sri Lanka. 3246 Hebrew Yakud, a foundation from the beginning. The 1615 degrees is complete finish. And that leads into Luke 14, 29 to 30, quoting, Left happily after he hath laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold it begin to mock him saying this man began to build and he was not able to finish. Doesn't that apply today somehow? Mm. It does, and there you are. So there's the dates just confirming so forth. And um, we go on. There's a close-up of the latitudes and longitudes. Notice that the words... Now, angels put this in. I didn't do any of this. Mm. This is what happens, that uh, angels sort of pop in now and then and... Shift stuff words, around, <laughs> set things on their edge. Push me off cliffs <laughs> and stuff like that. Prove I can't be killed. Okay. Now, now this one, uh, well, you read that. You, uh, you've gone through. Okay, so we, Yahweh was born of Jesus in Bethlehem, measuring from the coast to Bethlehem at 90 degrees from the coast, proceed to the latitude of 31.68 degrees. Stop on that latitude at 33.7999 miles and... There is the birth manger. Why 33799? Calculating the birth date as Jesus. June 17th, 2 BC. Jupiter and Venus aligned in a conjunction at 8 a.m. The Omega is the number 800. And Lord in Greek gematria is 800. Jesus is 888 and Christ is 1480. Add them all together and you get 3168. And that is the latitude, 31.68. And the distance from the sea, 33.799, or 33.8 years. Like, um, being, we're, only, we're only talking a metre or two difference here, yeah. so I just rounded it up. Right. Being birth as Jesus to resurrection. He lived one, two, three, four, five days. It's April the 3rd with the death and risen on April the 5th, 33 AD, Jerusalem time. See, this is where the um, uh, Quran or the people that... Uh, say they know all about and this is that and so forth. They, they deny the resurrection, they deny the cross and all this bullshit. And um, as I said before, I've read a few pages of the Quran and I said, ain't me talking, so I just closed it. Huh? The uh, Jupiter and Venus, when they uh, lined up in a conjunction, rose over the uh, uh, horizon of Bethlehem at 8.00 in the morning. 800 is Lord in Greek. <clears throat> Alright, now the latitude and longitude is, you can see it there on the screen. Oh, I should say, uh, Venus is the uh, representative in the planets as the mother and Jupiter the father. Don't go down the line where they're talking about uh, what happened in ancient times, maybe uh, a few centuries before the cross and this kind of thing. They're talking about the Greek gods and all. It's all bullshit. It's got nothing to do with what the, the pharaohs and the Egyptians and Isis. It's all bullshit. It all come along a thousand years after the, built, the pyramid was built. Okay. So uh, actually... Venus, so 698 it was, that is Marshall. And um, Mercury was uh, 702. So you add them two together, you get 1400. Now, this is, carry on, this is where it gets interesting. Okay, there are 100, 194 verses with certain man. This is the term used by Talmud Jews to avoid saying the name of God, which is Jesus. There are 194 verses 
verses with the word certain. The last is Jude 1, 4, quoting, For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, of course, who, who, who are they talking about? Yeah, I I think it could have been me. <laughs> Talk about the Jews. Oh. All right, now we're back to measuring well, from, from the that back mountain. to Bethlehem, and we've got that number, 5447. Huh? 0.64 kilometres. Now, ah. Yahweh's home at 4-150 Nell Street, Greensboro, Melbourne, is not perfectly square. A curiosity is two sides have a slight dog leg. He measured it years ago by walking the centre of the streets and marking the corners and dog legs with waypoints. Each straight line in the precise centre of the street, eight waypoints, and the distance around was instantly calculated with the Magellan handheld GPS, and the result was 888 metres. Are we right. surprised? <laughs> and there is the Nelson. Now there's location. a dog leg there, see. Now Ooh. most um, cities, they don't have dog legs in them like that, but this particular... Area did. Okay, now that's um, of course where Yahweh lived with Mary Magdalene for 13 years. And of course, uh, when she got the opportunity while was curing people in Fiji, she sold up the house on my father's birthday and kept everything for herself, which I had paid for. Everything. I paid for everything. She ripped me off for about oh, 250 grand. Her uh, response to me when I spoke to her or uh, sent her an email was, you've got to find me first, but I can fucking find her, no worry about that. But she will lose everything, including her life. Now, Sri Lanka, of course, is ancient. Now, that, that 547 BC, this is Wikipedia, you know, you can't trust anything in Wiki. It, Wikipedia is all, but uh, what it's trying to say here, even hmm. if you take it of the uh, corruption of the Wikipedia, uh, Solomon's around 900 BC. Yeah. So this thing didn't even exist according <laughs> to Wikipedia. It didn't exist. Until 547. Yet they say that it's rumoured that Solomon got all of his treasures from there. So. And that's Tarshish, yeah. where Paul came from. <laughs> right. Everything's meant to confuse and promote the idea you must obey your government because that's what Paul said. But obey your government that's there by the authority of God. Bullshit. Well, I've read three or four verses of Paul. Bullshit. Now, from the highest peak of the mountain, which is 8,281 feet, in Sri Lanka, to St. Catherine's Monastery, where the only authentic written and signed letter of any prophet, biblical or Quran, is the letter to the monks sent by Muhammad, which is on display. The Jews say it is a forgery, so naturally it means it's genuine. The distance says it all, 3390 miles. Uh, I'd like to say to all the clerics of the Muslim world, don't you come to me with anything saying this is what blah, blah, blah. Keep your mouth shut. I don't want to hear it. There's going to be a complete revamp of all your holy books and it's going to be mine. Quoting Daniel 6.10, Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and his windows being open in his chamber toward Jerusalem, is that number 3390. He kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did a fourth time. Now this is the message from Muhammad ibn Abdullah as a covenant to those who adopt Christianity near and far. Quoting, we are with them. Verily I, the servants, the helpers and my followers defend them because Christians are my citizens and by Allah. I hold out against anything that displeases them. No compulsion is to be on them. Neither are their judges to be removed from their jobs nor their monks from their monasteries. No one is to destroy a house of their religion to damage it or to carry anything from it to the Muslim's house. Should anyone take any of these, he would spoil God's covenant and disobey his prophet. Verily they are my allies and have my secure charter against all that they hate. No one is to force them to travel or to oblige them to fight. The Muslims are to fight for them. If a female Christian is married to a Muslim, it is not to take place without her approval. 
she is not to be prevented from visiting her church to pray. Their churches are to be respected. They are neither to be prevented from repairing them nor the sacredness of their covenants. No one of the nations, that is Muslims, is to disobey the covenant till the last day, the end of the world. <coughs> Any Mahmud is doing what I told him to do. I told him to feed, or I told the Queen to feed Somalia. They didn't have enough money. And uh, Iran did. Well, he, he said that the others were too busy warmongering. What have we got here? Now, this is the distance of oh, the degrees, 300.55 zero, zero degrees. That's the, that's the angle that <coughs> comes out from the monastery? No, uh, so that's from the monastery to the pyramid, and mm -hmm. its remnant being the letter of Muhammad. And 63 metres above sea level, which is the pyramid, is uh, Isaiah 63. It's all about Isaiah 63. Now the height above sea level tells the story. The pyramid is 63 metres, is Isaiah 63, and Yahweh's rebirth location is 18 metres. And in Hebrew, 18 means crib. <laughs> Now here we go. The distance from the highest mountain on Sri Lanka to Yahweh's place of birth is 8,674 kilometres and 8674 of course is the word of God total in the Hebrew concordance. 8,674 words. Right now, if that was years, it is 3168. Now if 8.674 is years, it would be 3168 days. I know, you do it all the time, just for me. Oh, well, you don't say that. <laughs> okay, now, what I did, because the uh, 31101 is so important, I calculated um, my place of birth, of course, and uh, in Australia, um, it is also Julian Day, 2431101. So I took the time of birth at 222, went back to Sri Lanka and then, which is uh, slightly behind Australia, and the um, star directly above <laughs> at that point of birth was YBS 0942, which is Jesus' uh, verse total. Yeah, that's how many verses in the New Testament have the word Jesus in yeah. it. And it's also the last uh, solar eclipse uh, to that crib and um, it's 942 miles on Occurring. November the 14th. Ten hours, I'm sorry Charles, you miss out a little boy, by uh, the fact that Australia is crossing international daylight before Charles, so it's on the 13th for Charles and the 14th. You'll be 64. You'll be 64, same age as Solomon. Solomon, and, uh, Solomon died at 64, didn't he? He died at 64. Yeah. Best evil man on the history. Alright, now, oh, moving right along, this is, do you want to read this? This is Cambridge, uh, Massachusetts, a historian of early Christianity at Harvard, divinity a woman, by the way. School was identified a scrap of papyrus, papyrus which means it's uh, Egyptian, that she says was written in Coptic Egyptian in the 4th century and contains a phrase never seen in any piece of scripture because they've ripped it out every chance they've got. That is why Muhammad's letter is so important, it was written to the Coptics. That is why Russia is Coptic. What you've got is the Russian alphabet is uh, Greek. And the same with the Coptics in, in uh, Egypt. So uh, the Greek Orthodox Church is what it's all about. Far, far, far in advance. And that's what Muhammad was protecting Ooh. the uh, people from the Roman Church. Okay. Jesus said to them, I've got to read a bit more. The faded paper fragment is smaller than a business card with eight lines on one side. Eight again is the number we're talking about. In black ink, legible under a magnifying glass just below the line about Jesus having a wife. The papyrus includes a second provocative clause that uh, purportedly says she will be able to be my disciple. Mutter. And here it is here. That little tiny thing as big as a uh, business card. There it is. 
So, of course, now the entire church yeah, now, is in disarray. That's right. Now, <laughs> today is a very special day uh, number-wise. Uh, I won't go into it, but uh, well, it was 103 days to go to the 21st of December. And all 90, that kind of 93 days. 93, was it? Well, that's the crucifixion. And uh, anyhow, it goes on. I don't, I don't want to go there at the moment because they go off on tangents. You lose a point. So uh, I command all nations to remove the Zionists from all things infested with the serpent's venom, remove them utterly from off, off the face of the earth. Immediately warn the Zionists to evacuate the Holy Lands and liberate the Palestinians from all Zionist control. Uh, those Zionists who repent immediately will be spared and must herald my new name, Brian Leonard Glotty Marshall, as God Almighty in the flesh. Establish a new world currency based upon the potential of the world building paradise under the leadership of Iran and I should mention there the value of a nation is based on the people's ability and their faith in God. Iran is way ahead of you. Shortly the Zionist monsters will be wiped off the face of the earth because they'll either do it or I'll do it and I won't be pleasant about it. This is, this is death. Well, my, my angels go and do the job. It's death. Iran has a chance of going ahead with all these uh, nations that are in the Middle East right now and uh, the war games that they're playing in the uh, Mediterranean. That makes the hair in my back stand up and I haven't got any. Uh, Iran will spearhead the cleansing of the Middle East, liberating Palestine and establish my kingdom. Islam will be completely revamped for the liberation of the meek must, most of which are women and children that are, are suppressed by the Quran and by these wankers that uh, dictate to them, mm. that are the average person. Right? Um, so, no cleric government or religion will tell me what to do. Free will is over and out. I will rule with a rod of iron, with kingdoms I will establish, every knee will bow, and my angels will drop the souls of objectors into the abyss. So be very, very careful what you say behind my back because your angel hears you and you're going to be out of there. That's the name of God. And there we are on the 4th of December in Fiji. <laughs> With a click. With a click. <laughs> the click of the heels. Uh, we went to a, um, a Christian uh, Hindu, Hindu uh, gathering, of, which was a wedding, uh, where a gentleman had uh, changed his religion. Was it? Uh, Raj. Raj and... Uh, Mina. Mina. Mm. Different Raj, not the Raj who not was on the... Raj, no. Lovely Raj. Was the Ooh, beautiful lovely. people. Now, um, you can tell them about what happened when uh, Raj was going to work on the bus. Oh, yes. Raj is a chef and uh, he switched jobs and now he had to catch a bus about a half hour ride to the next closest, Latoka. Mm. That's right, just outside of Latoka. And... They're, they're all they're, Fijians and Indian people. Right. Now, they work in these uh, places. We are hearing this for the first time on a Sunday afternoon. They have come after church to have lunch with us. And they're telling us what happened. He was on the bus and he saw an old couple with white hair sitting on the bus. Dressed in white. white. They were white people dressed as Westerners. And for everybody getting onto the bus, they were giving them a flyer. And on the flyer, it says, come to the 12A Sky Lodge Hotel to hear the truth of the Bible revealed. And it gave the time at 12 noon, uh, the Sunday, we were actually with them. And Raj took it and he looked at it and of course he knew that that was our address. And he's, he's excited, he goes, oh, this is, this is Yahweh and Asherah, this is, <laughs> I know them. And he was, had to stand at the back of the bus and he was trying to make his way down to speak to the people, to tell them, I, I know them, I know them. Because he thought that they were working for us. He thought that we'd hide yeah, them, but they were, well, they were, the, <laughs> we didn't know about it. So we are hearing about it for the first time that afternoon. And totally astonished. And he described them to us, all kinds of things. And he thought that they were friends of ours and we'd hide them. Well, what that did was that pre uh, prepared and alerted us to expect the masses that did follow. Nobody came that day, however, that they weren't supposed to because we were not prepared. But what happened from that day on and all through the next two weeks until we left to go to the other island, uh, we met George who was the security man at the airport and he brought all 222 members of his Methodist church in the area and we treated 
each one of them and <coughs> cured them of whatever diseases that they had. And of course, that is where we told the story of Stephen and his sister Diane, who told us that their grandfather had taught their father that the bure that they were living in, that Stephen and his family were living in, that um, had been built by their father, it was to remain in the family forever. A family member had to remain there because the grandfather, who lived to be 110 years old, or 105, was it, when he actually died? 105. Yeah. yeah. He said that this, to this bure, the Christ will come and it will the news of it will go throughout the world. Well, of course, uh, they are telling us on this day, and then uh, it was pretty much that night, because so many people have been coming for days, that the management of the resort phoned to say that we can't have any more there and we had to go somewhere else. So we went the following day to treat people at that bure that was the object of the project. So the bure was very old, built by the grandfather, but on the property they had erected a like a tin shed which they used for the church. So um, the 222 members of the church were all, of course, uh, hearing about us and uh, any, any of their diseases, whatever they had, we cured them for them. And that just rippled right across the island. Yes. The same thing happened up to a certain extent in uh, Fiji, when, uh, in New Guinea, when we healed people up there. There were people coming down from the highlands yeah. with AIDS and all sorts of things. That form of communication is word of mouth amongst oh. the natives. And also what happened over there, we was interviewed for two hours on the uh, government radio and uh, I think his name was Charles, or Joseph, I forget. He was um, saying, oh, this has got to go out, this has got to... I said, it won't, I'll stop you. No, no problem, I'm, I'm the positive. manager here. Frank. Next thing, it stopped. <laughs> but it did go out in Pigeon uh, across Later. the uh, South Pacific. And um, that, of course, alerted the South Pacific that we were back and that what, this is what we were saying, doesn't matter if you believe it or not. The point is, if you want to get cured of your AIDS and so forth, it comes to you. Mm. Now, of course, that prophecy that the grandfather spoke of was fulfilled that day. Mm -hmm. And it did go out to all of the world because we uploaded everything onto the YouTube. Hello! Cyberspace, all mm -hmm. of the world. Mm -hmm. For every eye to see and every ear to hear. Mm -hmm. well, here enders today's ripping yarn. <laughs> okay, so uh, Iran has already told uh, the... Uh, I don't like, to, I don't like to, word, to use the word Israeli because they're certainly not. Um, but uh, the head of the army or... Yes, the, the army? general. General, general told leave, otherwise... Leave, it otherwise it will be in the graveyard. Well, I'm giving you a head. Go ahead. You warn them, right? And if they don't leave, I would suggest that uh, you spend uh, a lot of time investigating the uh, other nations that have already got the ships in the area and uh, lend uh, a hand and then land in uh, Gaza, Minion Minnesota, get your weapons, and walk across into Jerusalem and take it. And if there's one shot fired, open up. Mm. Flatten it. Now, I'm saying to all the Jews there, you're forgiven, but you better get out of there. Right? Now, when the Iranians say we're coming, they're coming. If you don't take Iranians seriously, then you've got a big problem. Mm. They've always obeyed God. And they already believe it, so let's not uh, do anything stupid here. Get the hell out of Jerusalem. Release the Palestinians. The world will give them the same thing that the Jew bullshit Holocaust um, survivors, which didn't happen. There was no Holocaust. It's a complete and utter fabrication. It's a Ponzi. Is that the word, Ponzi? Yeah. Ponzi scheme. Yeah. And uh, release the Germans from this, the uh, stranglehold the they've got over their, their government. The guilt. If anybody should be guilty, it, well, it is. It's Britain. Britain is the Britain, uh, worst the nation party. on earth. They've always been warmongers and they've always been headed up by people that have wielded the axe. They're very, very easy. And Rothschild is at the top. Rothschild at the top. As for the Pope, now here I am born into a Catholic family. The Pope has thousands upon thousands of priests that would have automatically gone on YouTube and investigated me. No, they're not doing a damn thing. And even though the Vicar of Christ, God in himself, is supposed to be this Pope, 
If you look at Revelation 17.1, the beast that was wounded to death and did live was uh, uh, Pope John Paul II. He's the longest reigning pope. He spoke about 3,000 languages. Uh, and um, 942 days after the Saturday, the Sabbath, uh, that they had decided to make him pope was announced on the, uh, on the uh, 16th. It was the 14th they made the decision. The 14th, the next day, the Sunday, is 666 minutes of sunlight for Rome. So uh, 942 days later, Jesus again, he shot, but he lived. Hmm? So that's Revelation 17.1. 17 of course, is the length of the Shroud of Turin. 171. And when um, you phoned me for the first time, we mm -hmm. spoke for 171 minutes. And 38 seconds. <laughs> you should have said it. Which meant? <laughs> what? It's powerful. <laughs> Which means it's powerful. Mm -hmm. So that's how it all fits together. So now we've got this little piece of uh, information that this... Uh, uh, Cambridge, Massachusetts, um, scholar there, lady has got it. And uh, just on a little business card with three, eight lines, tells you the truth. Now, how do we stop this thing? Oh, that's it. Come on. One of them. <laughs>